Hey, thought I'd try this in a lower resolution to see if it won't be so jerky. I hope not. I don't know what's going on. All right, this is a journal from today, which is 411, first one of the day, Mayan Day 10 Death or Transformer. Oh boy, here it comes again another wave of feeling down. I wonder what it brings. What is its gift? Well, you gotta get through the tough stuff first before finding that out. That's usually the way, hindsight being 2020. The tears are really close though, so here goes, uncovering what's going on inside. There's a sense of feeling worthless, that my life here is pointless, has no meaning. That's an interesting one to watch going by. Don't think I'll bite on anything there. Oh, I begin to see. It's more of the fallout from my Easter experience. In feeling untethered, I cut myself loose from a lot over the whole Indy E thing. What I see is that with my reliance on beliefs around near-death experience stories, I not only tied myself into belief in a perfectly safe afterlife, I also tied myself down into time, that being the future, you know, looking at going into the future. So that's interesting. What I'm feeling now is the floating free that comes from cutting loose from that anchor. The belief in a beautiful future after a 3D amgadiment or a lifetime. Hmm. Again, I see how I hadn't realized that I had such a belief, such a connection into time, which I know doesn't really exist the way we think it does. And that's interesting how we could have uh, opposing or countering beliefs. I both knew time wasn't real and held a belief in a nice future at the same time. The subconscious doesn't worry about nitpicky things like coherence and consistency. It's quite willing to hold opposing views and not worry at all. It's probably more an emotional thing for us when we feel or encounter that dissonance. The subconscious could hardly care less. What that means, too, is that we have an untold number of maybe wildly divergent beliefs hiding out there in the subconscious. And who knows how they entered or when, but once there, they made themselves fully welcome. It's amazing how we can hold beliefs and be unaware of them. Oh well, the marvels of 3D life, huh? I hope you've encountered at least something like this so you can see how common it is. It's a good reminder that we really don't know all that much about self. It's funny too because we all assume we know ourselves pretty well and based on that we project it outward, thinking we know those around us well, too. And it's all built on nonsense. The mind does its best, but the issue could be that we are not mind, nor are we the body. We're something else entirely. And what we are throws a monkey wrench into the works every time. I really don't know who or what I am. I can admit that. Sure, I have some beliefs around it. We all grab the best and the highest beliefs we encounter to help us make sense of our lives. Hopefully, we're also learning to hold our beliefs lightly so that we're ready and able to ditch them when we find something different but better. To those stuck still in mind, this presents a challenge, for mind wants to be right all the time. It doesn't like not knowing. Heart doesn't have this problem. It's nice to be rid of it. Rid of what? Heart? Mind? 
I don't know. Okay. So this is some more of feeling lost. I'm glad that truth is my hero, for I know that no matter what, truth will always stand. It doesn't need defending. I don't have to worry about propping it up as mine does with its beliefs. Always defending them. This is a better way to live than what went before for me. Even if it is pretty uncomfortable just now, this too shall pass. This being cut free stuff surely has its awkward moments, like when the comfort zone gets violated for the umpty umpth time. And it's funny too because each time we feel so free after cutting something else loose. And that freedom may feel good after a while, but at first, it's often kind of scary. That's why we tend to feel lost after letting go of something with which we identify. Feels like we just lost a bit of the self, even though it was only the false self. This may actually be the mark of having identified with something, this lost feeling when it is let go. It doesn't help that most of our identifications are subconscious ones. That means that something in our life must bring them to the surface to be seen, or we'll just never know. These are things we take too much for granted. Life has to show us that first, before we can choose to let them go. Maybe that's all I've got to say. If it is, I'm going to say, I don't much like the direction these journals are going. There's something inside that wants them to be positive, supportive, uplifting somehow, and I just don't have that in me right now. Besides, that's strange in itself that I should step out of the journal enough to look at it that way. Things that make you go, hmm. So how are you guys doing, huh? Are you able to keep up with yourself, with your own changing? Maybe you're doing much better than I am just now. That would be great. This up and down stuff gets pretty old. I know there are a lot of us who'd love to leave this level of duality behind. Well, make friends with balance. That's been my choice, my response. Balance in 3D is the closest I can see to come to the higher dimensional way of containing the poles, the opposites. It works pretty well. One thing balance gives you is relief from the extremes of high and low. Heart being in the middle of the being, the body seems to support that somehow. The middle. There's a real distinction in here that I haven't mapped out quite clearly enough yet. You see, when it's the divine attributes we're experiencing, they have no opposites, no alternate poles. So you can get as high as you want on divine love or bliss and be fine. You're not buying into the equal but opposite low with that, since it doesn't exist. This is in distinction to the human feelings or emotions, which come in pairs. And to go too far in one direction there is to lock yourself in to a trip equally far in the other direction. It's just the physics of it. It's not like you have an option here. It's how the teeter-totter works. It's Mother Nature at work, and like gravity, we do want her laws to continue in their operation. It's kind of nice not to float off into the blue. We learn about self from them. That's one of her gifts. But who wants to be stressed any longer by the highs and lows of the manic depressive? That's quite a burden to bear. So the trick then becomes identifying the human experiences from those of the divine nature. That's surely interesting, and I can't say I have it mastered yet, but at least I'm able to identify it some of the time. I'll 
wouldn't settle for that. It's a whole lot more than I once had, for sure. There's a solar wind due to hit the 12th or 13th that may be impressive. I don't know, so this is just a heads up. I, uh, I follow spaceweather.com for such things, and I'm no expert. It's just that the coronal hole that's sending its solar wind stream our way is pretty darn large, so it could be interesting. Somehow, some way, it's clear to me that the sun is very much involved in the changes we're going through. We're so behind in our supposedly advanced science about the sun. The mainstream view with stars is they're still based on the nuclear hypothesis, when it's clear to me and many others that it's purely electromagnetic. Oh, well, it just is what it is. Thanks, Source, we can think for ourselves, friends. I really do feel this, this new world or age or whatever it is that we're walking into here supports each one sitting under our own vine and fig tree, so to speak, being our own king. I like that. When you get to run your world and I get to run mine, and when we're both in heart at the time, well, to me, that's a little piece of heaven on earth. I'm all for it. Respect and honor for all beings. No more abuse or killing of any kind. Oh my God, how long we've waited for such a world. This one has been so harsh. And it seems we're both sensitizing now, but also backing away from things here. This detachment remains active in so many of us, maybe all of us, but not yet fully recognized, hard to say. That looks to me, if it's true, like moving up into higher consciousness, or at least steps in that general direction. What are you seeing? Do you agree? Anyway, it will be nice when it's finally 2013 and we can be past all this 2012 stuff. It's truly amazing what all that has been pinned on this year. And most of it is pretty darn crazy. God bless us all and keep us. Help us make it through the crumbling of all these crazy beliefs and hopes. Thank God for truth. We can rely on her. And I'll just finish with a live bit here. Um, it's hard to believe how down I'm feeling, but it may be, I think it's down with a difference. Um, it's really like a washing my hands of this world, this realm, this dimension. And being done, it's like pulling out of it emotionally. It's hard. And I could be wrong, but uh, I say that based on having watched this detachment in action. I guess I probably noticed it about six months ago. I'd have to go back and look at the journals. But this is surely that. And, and I'm, I know I'm off in mind here. But, uh, and I know I like to put a nice spin on things because that's how I see things, you know. I really do believe no matter how bad it is, it's a blessing. That's, that's just my belief. And it's not one I, I'm ready to ditch. It works pretty well for me. It, it helps be my stabilizer, my rudder in, uh, in challenging times like this. And so using mind, one could extrapolate. And I've been watching the self just pulling away, pulling out, distancing, letting go. And wouldn't it be nice to think that maybe, just maybe, 
that's uh, an indication of the advancing new world. Good day.